Dear Ones I am Archangel Michael. Starting a new week, and why not say, a new month. As you usually see the end of the year. Hmm. I will tell you that we will have some actions during this month. No, 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 these will not be new procedures, the procedures are underway and everything is happening. We will only have some preparations for next year, for the upcoming parties, where you usually bring together your family and friends. Very good. This is all very well seen from above, because it is the celebration of union, the celebration of love, whether it be with family, whether it be among friends, work, it doesn't matter, you are celebrating love, friendship, joy. And this is what matters. So my brothers, as I said the previous week, today we will begin a new subject. Very good. Today I'm not going to talk about a topic that will last all week. Today I'm going to talk about small beliefs. I am not distorting our series of studies. This is part of the entire soul process. I haven't finished talking about Alma yet, but I can't give you a generic topic for this week. We will talk about several subjects, all concerning the soul. As you can see, this is a very long and very important subject, because a lot of things are related to the soul, and that you don't know about. So let's go. Let's talk a little more about the soul's journey, how the soul is analyzed over time. For those who already know, very well, they heard something they already know, but for those who have never heard of it, I'm going to talk a little about the Akashic Records. So to start, I need to tell you that there is a group, quite numerous, spread across the universe. Many know that when Akasha is referred to, it is taken into account to remember books, great libraries. So let's say that's actually what it is. The idea is not entirely wrong. We can make an almost perfect parallel. So starting, as I said, there is a very large group, spread across the universe, who are the Akashic Masters. They are pure energy with consciousness. They are not the same as me, because each one has their own role, I have my role in the universe and they have theirs. Very good. But they are energies with consciousness. Some have already seen one of their masters in dreams or visually. Yes, they also have the ability to cross-dress, however they want, to show themselves to you, so that you can create an image that you can imagine. This is perfectly normal, but they do not incarnate, they are just energy, they do not undergo the process of incarnation. So, as I said, there are numerous masters. Each group is responsible for a quadrant of the universe, and takes care of many souls. That's why I told you that they are numerous. Imagine, taking care of all the souls in the universe. So let's say that when a soul is born, that soul is created, a book is opened to that soul, a book is created, soul such, such, and such, yes, souls have names, but I will not go into this merit now, was created on the day such, such, and such, this from your perspective. There's no point in saying things you don't understand yet, so I'll keep the calendar as you know it. And from then on, every step that this soul takes is noted in this book. It is not a single master, there are several masters for one soul. For example, a master takes care to write down moments of joy, another, moments of sadness, another, the moments of pain, of suffering. So each master has a purpose there is an aspect of that soul that he cares about. So no, I'm not going to explain how everything happens here, but each master feels it, when he connects with that soul, he feels every movement it is making. He doesn't need to stay, so to speak, standing at the window looking at that soul all the time. He feels what is happening to her, according to the purpose he is following. If he is following the suffering of that soul, when it suffers, he feels a vibration, let's put it like that, and then he writes it down in the book. My brothers, I'm trying to make things so that you understand, but of course he doesn't write it down in any book. This is all energy. Everything is practically automatic, but I'm not going to explain how it happens, because you wouldn't understand. So let's continue with our story that he notes in the book. 
This soul, on that day, had a lot of suffering due to this, 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 and this, and gets people involved in that process. And so is the walk of that soul. Everything that happens is noted in the book. And it's as if each feeling were marking a point on a large mural, and when that soul, let's say, the soul has several pieces, each piece has its book. So that piece gets a book that will be updated with each reincarnation, with each incarnation, it is being updated. So each piece has a book, and the soul as a whole, there are several books, then we can say that the Akasha of a soul is a library, because it contains several books, one of each piece, of each of those multidimensional selves. And every little piece has that mural that points out the feelings, and that mural is added to all the others, creating the mural of Alma. So we can quickly say, when you open the Akashic records, it is nothing more than the master opening the great book of your soul, and then he sees that mural, and he can see that you were a soul that suffered a lot, you were a very happy soul, what did you do, what you didn't do, and so on. He has everything right there at his fingertips. No, he won't keep opening book by book to read his entire existence. And another thing worth mentioning is that very important events remain separate. These are highlighted. For what? So that it is known at the time of a reincarnation, what is important that soul has to deal with. What lesson did that soul suffer and did not learn? So this is highlighted. When the soul incarnates and goes to the karmic board, they know exactly the point at which that soul has to improve, because they have the Akasha in front of them. So my brothers, each soul is known in this way. It's not like you are going to do a quick read of the entire existence. No, all of this is added together and makes a great summary, as you usually say, of the actions and attitudes of that soul. Very good. So. Each person that passes through your life, each one, creates an energetic connection with you. So you can imagine, over so many incarnations, what threads you have hanging from you. Practically, we can say that, if this were to materialize, we would not see you, we would only see the wires, because there are many, there are thousands. Are many. Because each person creates a connection, depending on the degree of relationship with the soul. Family, has a stronger connection, very close friends also have a strong connection, relationships, too, and those acquaintances or colleagues, who have only passed through your life, in the work environment, in the school environment, are weaker connections, but they are there. So do you realize, that more and more, what we say that you are all connected, is true? Can you understand this? Imagine over the thousands of lives that most of you have had, how many people have you met? And souls are out there reincarnating, incarnating, reincarnating, how many times? So my brothers, this is how connections with people are made. And the feelings arising from these connections are also noted, because it is these feelings that could one day provoke feelings of fear, revenge, hatred, which is not good for your souls. So going back to an example of a procedure I did here, the forgiveness procedure, in which I told you that you would light the candle and that it would sweep your entire soul line and ask for forgiveness and forgive all those left behind. At this moment what happens? These connections, which are stuck in the past, of pain, of feelings, of people that you have harmed, so you are asking for forgiveness. If this forgiveness is asked very strongly, very sincerely, why is there no point in lighting the candle and simply saying, Ah, forgiveness, okay. No, it won't work at all, because this didn't come from the bottom of my heart. You have to have that feeling of repentance, and ask for forgiveness, recognize that what they did was wrong, hurt that person unnecessarily. So you ask for forgiveness, but from the bottom of your heart. Very good. With this act, what happens? That connection, we can say that it is broken, but broken, not in the sense that you no longer have a connection with that person, that's not it, it is broken in the sense of feeling. So that feeling that she has towards you and you have towards her, that feeling, yes, it is erased. Then it becomes a neutral connection, a connection in which there is no feeling there that will alter the meaning of your soul. 
So you remain connected to the person, but that feeling, that feeling that provoked everything in your soul, is eliminated. And at this moment when you ask that soul for forgiveness, you often say, but I don't know if she forgave me. The higher self of the other soul receives this request for forgiveness, and that piece of that soul that is connected to you, will be able to forgive you or not. But realize this, when you ask for forgiveness, someone has to forgive you. So it is part of the growth of the other soul, to forgive you, have a noble heart and also forgive him, from the bottom of my heart. Then her connection with you will also be broken in relation to the feeling. So you can realize that in addition to there being a connection between you, it is a two-way connection, which comes and goes. Now, if she doesn't forgive you, that connection that comes from her to you will no longer reach you because you eliminated that. If she hasn't forgiven you, the onus will be on her alone, no longer with you. So no matter how much the connection between you remains, for you the connection will be eliminated, the feeling connection will be eliminated. And if the other soul was not able to forgive you, then she is in trouble, not you anymore. Very good. So now let's move on to the other aspect. It's as if you are now placing yourself contrary to what I said in the previous item. You are forgiving. Then, you forgive from the bottom of your heart, and the same thing happens, the connection of feeling is broken, and you do the other person a lot of good, because they will be very happy to know that they have been forgiven, that what she did was forgiven. So this is how we break the connections, not the connections between people. These are never broken. You will live like hedgehogs your entire life, because you have a connection with everyone who has passed through your lives. Now feelings, these are broken, they are eliminated and then, they leave that mural, and no longer add up to that aspect of your soul in general. So let's give another example, a process of extreme pain, in which he went through a lot of fear. This was marked in his soul, and this fear has been brought to the present day. You are an extremely fearful person, extremely insecure, due to things you have experienced in the past. So, work can be done so that all this fear is broken. Then this connection of fear will be broken. The situation itself will continue to exist in the past, nothing changes, nothing will change. When you eliminate these feelings, you don't change the past, what happened is there, it will not change only the way it was passed on to your soul will be changed. Then, that feeling that causes all this fear, in your soul today, will be broken at its origin, and this will be propagated over time, cleaning all the walls of all the books of your life, of that soul, of that peace, until it reaches the current days. And then your soul will no longer resonate these feelings. You will stop feeling this absurd fear that you have of everything. So this is how the Akashic Records work. Going back a little to what I said last week, Alma chooses, creates that script and embodies it. So the entire global aspect of that piece is analyzed before incarnating. Everything that the soul has been through and that needs to improve, it needs to overcome that as a lesson. So it's like I said, the soul often chooses suffering, thinking it will get better, and in fact it only finds more suffering. Then the soul chooses, and these feelings come in the soul. It's as if they were, they were impregnated in the soul. That's exactly it. Imagine, you as humans now, you have a series of memories, good and bad in your memories. So, your soul, that piece that is incarnating, also has many memories, good and bad, but at the moment of incarnation through the wheel of samsara, you forget everything. They don't remember anything but the feelings are permeated. You may not remember what caused that feeling, but you know there is fear, you know there is anger, you know that there is hatred for revenge, that's what you feel. Then many may ask, but if I don't remember who I'm angry with, how will I know that I'm angry with that person? Very good. When you meet this soul, something will vibrate inside you, and you will know that you are angry with that person and you don't know why. Many times you meet people, and something in you, deep down, says, Hmm, I didn't like it, I didn't like that person. And you don't know why. It is someone who is returning to your path, 
just for you to deal with some feeling that was left over from the past, some feeling that was unresolved, and this person comes back. Don't think that on her side, she didn't feel the same thing because she will. And then, possibly there is a lesson to be learned, and that is where you get rid of these problems, of these feelings. Then many may say, ah, so this is a karma that I brought to be able to resolve it with this person. No, I repeat again, we don't like that word, we prefer to say that it is a lesson that you have to learn together she. So the universe really conspires for this to happen again, and you resolve this lesson on both sides. So many relationships you have are problematic, many of you think that you are relatives from the past, who come back to eliminate karma. I can tell you that yes, many situations that you didn't learn from in the past come back again, since you didn't learn, but not with his relatives, not with those of you who experienced it back there, but with other people. Remember, you choose the families you are born into. You are not born into the same family circle your entire life. It is not how it works. Then you will suffer that lesson with other people, not with those you did in the past incarnation. Disagreements exist in all families. So it is very easy to find someone with whom you can fulfill that lesson, not necessarily someone from your family in the previous incarnation. You have to move forward, my brothers, not reincarnate everyone in the same family, just changing places. This wouldn't have made any sense. So each time you incarnate, you incarnate in different families, but you will certainly go through the necessary lessons, to learn what was not learned in the previous one. There are some exceptions, in which two souls reincarnate very close together. Often it can be within the family, often it can be outside, but very close. This is in the case of revenge, where a soul with very bad feelings practically couples with another and incarnates with them, to make them suffer throughout their lives, until this connection is broken, until you forgive or ask for forgiveness, it doesn't matter, do both and free yourself from this other soul. So in these cases, it happens that they really know each other from other lives, but most of the time no you are souls who have never seen each other. So therefore, I stated to you, last week, that you are all related, you have been running here on this planet for a long time. So the connections are already more than crossed. And yes, it may happen that you come back into contact with a soul that was once a relative or friend, a while ago, and then there is that joy, that good thing, that harmonious coexistence, because they are souls that have already lived together, that have already they know each other, as if they were great friends who are seeing each other again. This happens a lot very much so. Can souls choose who will come around them? For example, I can choose to have a person that I love very much in this incarnation, of me choosing to have her come again next time, next to me. As long as this is agreed with her. You can't define it by it. In these cases, the karmic council brings the two souls together and asks, do you want to come back together again? And if they both agree, they both come back. This can happen. And then there are these connections, which everyone says is perfect love, the soulmates. They are not always soulmates. Many times they are souls that have already incarnated, were happy in one incarnation, and came back together again to continue that happiness. It doesn't mean it's a soulmate, this means that it was a compatible soul, in which there was such a harmonious coexistence, that they wanted to come back together again. Yes, this can happen, but it must have the consensus of the karmic council. It is not you who decide, they decide if it is worth it for the souls for this to happen. Because you always have to realize the following, you have to evolve, this is the purpose of each soul, evolution. So if you come with a soul, that you already know, and it will be that coexistence that is all right, all cute, where nothing goes wrong, how will you evolve? What will be the degree of evolution of that incarnation? Practically zero, because you will not evolve at all. Now if you come together, but are prepared to have a large family around you, in which you can teach all this love that you experienced, to these children and descendants, perfect because you will be fulfilling a mission of care. This is also an evolution, because in this coexistence that you will have with these new beings, 
you will be put to the test of many things. And then yes, there is an evolution. So my brothers, always put this in your minds. The objective of a soul is one, to evolve. And there are those souls who like to be alone, they don't like anyone. They are those souls who came here and still miss home to this day, they have not adapted here until today, and no matter how much they embody, they have a family, they never get along with anyone, because they always want to be alone. They are aware that those there are not their family, her family is far away, and this pain this soul carries for a long time, until today. So, it is a soul that is often, even lonely, he has coexistence because he needs to live, but he doesn't have many relationships, doesn't get involved much with people, likes to always be alone. Because he does not recognize himself as part of this whole. There are many of you like this, who have been walking over time, but have not been able to evolve in relationships, because it is a soul that has stopped, you cannot evolve. Thus, each relationship that a soul has brings lessons, is what takes you to the middle. You are born in the middle, you are not born from the ether, you are born into a family, whether you want to or not. So that family environment makes you what you are. So you have a medium, acting on you and you have the relationships. These are the two aspects that make the evolution of a soul. So if you isolate yourselves, that part of the relationships remains without evolution, because you don't go through the suffering inherent to relationships. So you keep incarnating, reincarnating, reincarnating, incarnating, and you don't grow at all, nothing changes, because you haven't opened yourself up to change. So my brothers, little by little, I am showing you the decisions of a soul when incarnating, what it brings to mind. Think about it, you have a human outfit, a brain, consciousness, and your soul throws all these feelings into your memory, into your consciousness. So everything comes from the soul, everything comes from it. She throws everything to your conscience, so that you can live. So you and your soul are one thing. You human clothing, human consciousness, is the representation of that piece of your soul, of that piece that is incarnated. So all these feelings, you bring from your soul, it is from her that these feelings come, and it is through her that they can be changed. Well, it'll stop here for today. Tomorrow there is another related piece for Alma. But before closing as we are starting a new week. Let's go to the prayer of the week, my Archangel Michael. May you give me wisdom and awareness, to know the points in which I need to improve, to know the points where I need to improve, so that I can, little by little, learn each of the lessons, and provoke the evolution of my soul. I am Archangel Michael. I am here, ready to help you on this journey, to continue becoming more and more confident and evolved.